Hey guys, how y'all doing? Uh, good to be back and, and do another uh, podcast this week as it is Easter week and weekend and we're very excited uh, for Easter. Um, just getting prepared for Easter has been so much fun. Getting to see the big tent set up outside and the stage and all the chairs um, with a vision of all those being filled so that people could hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, has been very exciting this week. It's making me anxious for Sunday morning just to be able to be with you all um, in the presence of the Lord. And so anyway, without further ado though, uh, as you can see, we're a little bit Easter colored here. I got a, a pink shirt on and Pastor Wes has got a, a blue shirt on and, and we're uh, we're kind of excited for Easter as well. But this morning or this afternoon, really, we, we thought we'd bring to you something related towards Easter. And uh, today we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, John 18. And so I'm going to read John 18 very quickly, verses 1 through 11. And then we're going to kind of just reflect on those verses because this is when uh, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's betrayed uh, by Judas and uh, he's arrested. And so we're going to focus on that first part and then you'll just have to come hear the rest on, on Sunday morning, all right? So anyway, it says in verse 1 of John 18, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then Jesus asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke, Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? So we have this beautiful scene which, upon reading it, seems as if it is um, really about to be the the climax of a story. When you read a story, this is like the beginning of the climax. Uh, we're at the very last part of the rising action, I guess you could say. And Jesus is betrayed by Judas and arrested. Um, and his response to the soldiers being that, I am he, he is the Lamb of God, his response to them. And... Uh, you see this whole scenario start to take place, but I see Jesus' calmness in this situation. And I even, just to go back for a minute, uh, I even see his response. Uh, it says in verse 4, Jesus therefore knowing all things that would come upon him went forward and said to them. So I almost see as if, if Jesus is in the garden over here and they are walking towards him and he knows what's about to happen, he's not sitting there waiting, grieving the moment of, oh, I hope they go past me. It's a, he turns and he knows what's about to happen. And so he goes towards them uh, to ask, whom are you seeking? Yeah. And so, uh, Pastor West, what's some of your, your thoughts on, on that? Um, there, there's so much that goes in, into it that it's, it's uh, really mind boggling. The, the one thing that, that when you're reading that, I, I, I think, of him being in the garden and he was praying and as he was praying he was he was so earnest that 
that his sweat appeared as drops of blood. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know that, that he had asked for that cup to be removed from him. Um, but not his will, but the Lord's be done. That's right? right. So so then there was an angel, right, right. that come and ministered unto him and, and strengthened him. And, and with that, I think of when he walks toward those those guards and the high priests and all those that, that came, his statement was, I am he. That's right. Now, if we go back, I think of I think of Moses at the burning bush and and God gets his attention and he tells him, Take off your sandals for you're standing on holy ground and he begins to give him instruction. I want you to go back into Egypt and I want you to go face the, the people you've ran from. Um, you, you're going to go back in and pull my people out of Egypt. Right. Um, I see their taskmaster. I see the, the, the burden that they're under. And Moses says this. He says, well, well, who am I going to tell them that has sent me? And I think it's, it's very, very interesting that, that God speaks to Moses and says, tell them that I am sent you. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus in the garden says, I am he. Um, so, so with the relation of that, um, just for a moment, what was God to the children of Israel? He was everything. What did he provide for them? I mean, the, he provided, uh, well, the, the Exodus, he, 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 meet, he was a way for them to yeah. receive freedom from their captors multiple times. Um, he provided them with, uh, many things, many miracles when they were in the desert wandering, um. So he was Yahweh, his, was his representation, what he told them that he was as well. So when you said that, it sparked my mind. Um, let, let's talk about this. All the plagues were taking place, and Pharaoh still would not let the people go. Right. But then there was the last one. And in the last one, he says, I want you to go out and get a, a, a lamb that is without spot, without blemish. And I want you to go ahead and prepare a, a sacrifice. And after you sacrifice and you eat, I want you to take and, and apply that blood to the doorpost. Right. So, so now I'm, I'm th this was the last straw. This was, this was the, the, the deal breaker. Right. Pharaoh says, all right, had enough. The death angel comes. It passed over the, the Hebrews or Israelites. And, and, and it rained and wreaked havoc. Up on up on the Egyptians, right? Right. So then the children of Israel were allowed to be let go. Right. But it was the blood of the Lamb, and now we we talk about that Lamb, John the Baptist. When when Jesus was coming in, in front of him to be baptized, I love what he 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 is pinned here. In in uh, in John one twenty nine, it says the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away." The sin of the world. Mm -hmm. So, so now we understand that that man. This is the ultimate sacrifice for sin. This is right. this is everything that was tied up in 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 the I am of of Israel is now released upon us. Right. Even now, right? We see that power come to play in his words in that scenario. We see where he responds to them and says that he is the I am in that. They, they fall back to the ground. They stumble and fall under the power and under the weight of his words. Think about this. How, read, that, read again how they showed up to get him. Uh, let's see here. It says, Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief, chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Why would you come after someone who has done nothing to anybody. I mean, really, Jesus hadn't, hadn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. The only thing that Jesus was, was accused of really is, is healing people, mm -hmm. delivering people, and making the Pharisees mad. Right. And they show up with torches and weapons. Right. Really? Right. So Jesus makes a comment, I'm he. And literally, in his words, he rendered that whole mass crowd powerless. Right. They couldn't have went anywhere with Jesus unless Jesus was willing to go. Right. It almost reminds me a little bit of what we were talking about in the car the other day when we were talking about David's revelation of who God is, that he is the the mighty warrior 
where he he renders armies powerless because of his words and how yes. he speaks. And so in that moment, all of those men rendered powerless in three simple words spoken by the Lamb of God. I am he. Those simple That simple phrase knocked them all on their bottoms. Every one of them. Mm-hmm. But then you have Peter. Right. And Peter is high-spirited. That's right. <laughs> right? Jesus has already spoke over Peter that, that you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, no, I'm not. Mm-mm. Not me. I'm going to hold fast to the end. Right. And now you find him. He's rising up here. And, 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 and all of a sudden, he takes out his, his sword and slices a man's ear off. Not even one of the soldiers, just the servant of the high priest. Hmm. And what's Jesus' response? Jesus' response is, Put your sword into your sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my Father has given me? Hmm. So, I'm going to talk about, well, I'll leave that alone for now. But he then speaks to Peter and says, I've got to walk with what my Father has instructed me. Absolutely. John 3, 16 and 17. For God yeah. so loved the world that he gave his mm -hmm. only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should, should not, not perish, perish, but, have everlasting, but have everlasting life. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn mm -hmm. the world, that but that the world saved. through him might be yeah. saved. So, so in, in that moment, in that moment, again, he is, he is speaking... God the Father has sent me here to take care of this business. Who are you to try to stop it? Yeah, it's another like get behind me Satan moments that he has. Absolutely. Where yeah. someone is trying to step in and intervene with the divine purpose of the Son, which was to be the Lamb of God, the one to be taken, to be slaughtered. As mentioned in, in, in Isaiah, the Lamb led to the slaughter the suffering son of God. Um, that there was no guilt found in his mouth. He, no. he didn't have any words of, 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 of hurtfulness, and, and, and he went before them literally as a lamb. Right. Literally as right. a lamb. Um, yeah. um, it reminds me of the scene where they're deciding between Jesus and uh, what was the other guy's name? Oh, my goodness. Barabbas. Barabbas. Uh, and they're sitting there, or they're standing there in front of the crowd, and the crowd decides to free Barabbas. And then they're asking, the governor then asks, what, what, what shall I do with Jesus of Nazareth? And they start chanting, crucify him. And then what does the governor do with his hands? He washes his hands. Right. Now, it, 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 in, in historical writings... It is said that he actually began to go crazy from that time forward and continuously washed his hands. Mm -hmm. You think, you, you are the deciding factor on whether or not this man lives or dies. Of whether or not an innocent man lives or dies. Yeah. But it was the will of heaven right. that he died. Absolutely. Again, he could have called legions of angels that come to his rescue. At any moment. At any moment. But he didn't even have to. All he had to do was speak the word. And it's funny because even the devil knew that. Because when he was driven out into the desert and tempted, the devil mentions that to him. If you truly are the Son of God, save yourself. Yeah. Save yourself. Mm. Or turn this uh, rock into a bread. Yeah. So he knew. It, it even shows that the enemy knew who he was. He knew that he was the I Am. He knew yes. that Jesus was the Son of God. He knew that Jesus was going to be the Lamb of God. He knew that. He already knew those things. Now let's take it to another level. Right. How do we unlock the power that's in Christ Jesus? How do we truly unlock that to come up on our lives and, and that we can, we can come to a place where we operate in that divine authority? It has to go back into the exact same thing that the enemy questioned Jesus with because he questions us with it. Is he really the Son of God? 
Do you really believe that Jesus came and that he died and he rose again right. and these miracles took place and yeah, he was born of a virgin? And Do you really believe that? Because if we don't, we are shortchanging ourselves with the power and authority. Right. That's another conversation we had. We had some good conversations, by the way, the other day. But let me tell you, that was the conversation we had too, talking about John the Baptist. Absolutely. John the Baptist, the man who was sent to prepare the way for Christ, who back when he was in his mother's womb knew when they met in the womb that that was the Son of God. He leapt in his mother's womb. Then yep. all those years later when he's in prison, the enemy is in his ear and he questions in the moment yeah. was, is that man really who I thought him to be or who he said he is? So that even shows how much the enemy attacks us with that. Now, there's one way to combat that. It's with the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Which was given to us by the Father. And quoting the Word. Absolutely. I know who He is because the Word says who He is. Yep. Um, we have to combat against the... The, the enemy and, and do spiritual warfare. Now, when I say spiritual warfare, I am, I, am, I am rebuking the things that come to my mind that is not in line with the Word of God. Yeah. But this is the thing. I have a hard time doing that if I don't know the Word. Yeah. If I, if I don't read the Word and I don't know the Word, I'm taking somebody else's Word for what the Bible says. Right. Right? So I have to, to digest that word that it becomes part of who I am. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's in I think it's in James. He talks about the the new inscriptive word where it's engrafted the engrafted word, or the the word becomes part of who you are. Your life begins to bleed Jesus. Right now, I know that you're probably thinking, well, Pastor West, you're really uh, spiritual, and 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 you're you're talking about. I, I don't have time to do some of the things you're talking about, but listen, it's as simple as believing. Yeah. What happened to Moses when he left the burning bush? I mean, he was he was t uh, tested time and time again. He needed the Spirit. He didn't question, did he? No. He just went. Sometimes we need to do less questioning and follow. Yeah, he knew how to follow directions. Yeah. Even though sometimes he grumbled yeah. when he did them. Yeah, and we talked about that not long ago as well when he got frustrated and yep. and he, he, he hit the rock when he was supposed to speak to the rock. Right. But you know what? There's there's trouble sometimes in our life where the power of Christ is really revealed. Um, and, and you can think of one if you want to testify to the moment, but this is what I also thought when, when Moses took the children of Israel out to the sea and uh, and they were they were they were getting ready to be, you know, overcome by the armies of, of Egypt and and he's like, Lord, what in the world am I gonna do? And he says, Oh, just lift up your rod. Just lift it up. And when he lifted it up, what happened? The waters parted. The I am. Where he parts the waters in our life, where, you know, Jesus blood was shed that that the chains of sin could be released. Yep. So let me throw you one more. We talk about the death and the power of the death, but just for a brief moment, let's let's say, what is the resurrection? Mm. And I'm gonna throw it back to you. And you, when you think about it, think about what what does that resurrection mean to you? Wow, well, the uh, resurrection for me means a lot of things, but I think even in just the scripture that we've decided to do today has shared another avenue of it that I think I'm, I want to talk about it being. And that being, Jesus was the man who never lost his life but decided to give his life because it yes. was the will of the Father. Yes. And so, I don't see a man who fought to not be arrested, beaten, mocked, right. scorned, crucified, and killed um, for the transgressions of others. I see the Son of God, the Lamb, the suffering servant prophesied about in the Old Testament and fulfilled all those things that were prophesied about and then written and testified about in the New Testament. I see that man, the, the man without blemish, 
walk a sinless life and fulfill the Father's will gladly. Gladly. Happily to fulfill it because of how much he loves each and every single one of us. And then it goes even a step further for when he's buried. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the resurrection. That's where those three days from today, which is Good Friday, until Easter morning when the resurrection took place, um, everything was, I'm sure, quiet and still. And people were waiting for what was going to happen. But then Jesus was resurrected from the grave by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And I know that that Spirit lives inside of me. So the Bible says that the one who laid down his life mm -hmm. picks it up again. Yep. And there's no tomb that is deep enough. There, there's no rock big enough. Right. Um, some of you listening today may may think that that um, you're you're buried that your life has come to a, a dark close and you can't see past the despair and things in your life, I want you to know that, that you've not been buried, you've been planted. Mm -hmm. And as you planted, one day the water's going to hit you and you're going to grow up and there's going to sprout new life. It's not over. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning. Um, I, I think about when we're, we're talking about this and I think, I think about the, the slave or the servant or the, the, the high priest um, how did that moment change his life? If you were standing there and your ear had just been whacked off and laying on the ground, Jesus picks it up and says, whoop, and all of a sudden it's healed. How does that transform your life? I, I mean, for me, if that happened in that time, I think I'd be doing a lot a lot of rethinking after that moment about what I believed in. You got to think of the events that's happened there. And and they came, Jesus spoke, they had fell on the ground. Then jump up, right? When it's permitted to them. Then he asks again. And then wham, the ear comes off and then Jesus puts it back on. Could you imagine just feeling that power of his words hit you to a point where you fall over and then your ears off and then it's already then it's put back on again? You know that it has to transform. All by one man. All by one man. One man. Yeah. One man. Yeah. And I can say it like this. He may not have cut my ear off, but there was things in my life that fell off and Jesus put it back together mm -hmm. there was a realness of life and if I could communicate one thing with, with all of humanity today is that the life in Jesus Christ is far better than any life that I ever lived before regardless of how difficult regardless of the struggles and the strains I am thankful for my life in Jesus because mm -hmm. I have come to know that resurrection power Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just like John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave okay. His yeah. one and only Son. And so uh, this weekend, we really want to celebrate with you all. Um, if you're able to watch this, uh, we are having service, of course, on Easter Sunday <clears throat> with the Big Ten outside, uh, eleven o'clock. Correct. It's at eleven o'clock. Um, if it's cool, we got heat. That's right. It's gonna, it's gonna be all right. It's going to be a good day. Um, there are a lot of fun things that we have planned for that day. Yeah. Um, please, if you feel like uh, there's going to be too many people, come anyway. If you feel like there's not going to be room for parking, there's room for parking. We made room for parking. It's going to be a great day. It's we want to celebrate with you all uh, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of our Absolutely. King. Absolutely. Uh, and so we yeah. so desperately want each and every single person within our community and outside yep. of that to know the love of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the biggest weekends uh, to share that because yeah. so many people come to church on Easter weekend. So if you yeah. come, uh, we encourage you, uh, just smile at everybody that you see. 
Uh, even if uh, you got to yeah. find a parking spot you're not used to and things like that. But we, we love you all, and we can't wait to see you there. Absolutely. We love you guys. Um, I'm really excited about Easter Sunday. Um, we've put a lot of time and, and prep into that. The kids is going to have a blast. Um, their service in the, in the sanctuary is going to be really good, and then they have a lot of activities afterwards. We want you to come. We want your family to come, um, your friends to come. Invite whoever you would like. It's going to yep. be a great day. So uh, worship is going to be off the chain, guys. It's going to be phenomenal this, mm -hmm. this coming Sunday. So yep. we love you so much. We look forward to seeing you and hope you've enjoyed this. Yep. Also, you have to come. That was part one. You're going to have to hear what happens after the arrest of Jesus. Yep. So, so we'll hear that on Sunday. So anyway, yep. we love you all. God bless you. Be safe this weekend if you're traveling. And uh, we can't wait to see you all. Love you guys. Love you. God bless.